Some films live forever. Some die. Most films were never alive to begin with. Yet some remain unforgotten, stuck in purgatory, waiting to be finally laid to rest. Like ghosts, they haunt a few, narrating tales of injustices suffered. O oh, Fabi is one such film. Made by K. Srikutan, it holds the distinction of being the first feature film in Asia to combine live action with animated characters. An important fixture in the lives of most 90s kids born and raised in Kerala, the film unfortunately hasn't aged too well. But the fact that such a film was even attempted over 25 years ago still evokes wonder. Srikutan is the third son of M. Krishnan Nair, one of South India's most prolific filmmakers. One of the rare directors to have worked with the superstar trio of NTR, MGR and Prem Nasir, there were many Fridays where two of his films would release simultaneously. At his peak, he would direct one film in the morning, run to the sets of another and end the day by working on a third film, reminisces Srikutan. Known for his wacky ideas and creativity, it fell on Srikutan to take the family legacy forward. He began working as an assistant to director Hariharan, who was himself an assistant to Krishna Nair. He recalls this period fondly, citing the many late nights and movies he would binge watch with writer Raghunath Paleri. One such memory was the night they watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit in a theatre in Kolkata. I remember not being able to sleep that night. How did they do it? I thought I understood filmmaking and here was a film where real people were interacting with cartoons. Could it be real people dressed to look like cartoons? Call me naive, but I made a vow to my friends that I would one day make such a film. My friends thought I had gone crazy. His first independent film though was Pavakota, a regular feature starring Jairam and Parvati. Dealing with the theme of adultery, the film failed, forcing Shri Kutan to return to his guru. As he worked on Harihar and Sargam, the universe had started to conspire to take him closer to his dream. Sabu, Shri Kutan's friend, had invented a mechanical robot which had become the toast of the town. Capable of performing pujas, the robot was being highlighted in the press. An NRI, Simon Tharagan, saw this piece of news and travelled to India to meet the inventor. Simon sir was a visionary with a very scientific bent of mind. He was obsessed with doing things differently and when he met Sabu, he said he wanted to produce a film. Shri Kutan adds, but there was one condition, the film had to be unusual. Sabu and Taragan then visited the sets of Sargam. Unbeknownst to Shri Kutan, the duo observed his work, analysing if he could be the director of this very different film. Taragan was impressed with how he handled the set. Phone calls were exchanged and meetings were set, but they couldn't come up with an idea to work on. So Shri Kutan moved to Kochi to focus on this project alone. After weeks, almost like a dream, Roger Rabbit popped back into his head. Shri Kutan says, I told Simon sir about making a part live action, part animated movie and he was thrilled. But I had no idea how to go about it even though he gave me a lot of confidence. In fact, Simon sir was an artist himself and he even started sketching cartoon figures. We had finally arrived at our own unusual idea. A script began to take shape. Simon Tharagan started writing a story based on the character Fagin from Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist while Shri Kutan focused on the film's technical aspects. O Fabi was born as the friendly cartoon wizard who would help a teenager get out of trouble. Rogue, Tharagan's son, was to play the film's teenage hero along with the cast that included Srividya, Nagesh, Nasar, Tilagan and Manoj K. Jain. Months had passed and the actors had started to arrive for the shoot. But we still hadn't figured out how to shoot it, Shri Kutan adds. One of the ideas mooted back then was to shoot the film like how double rule scenes were shot. But we needed a dummy in the place of the cartoon character for actors to emote. As we were figuring out how we would do this, I ran into an actor, Mela Raghu. He adds, a little person, he was more than glad to be a part of the film. The universe had conspired again. A costume was created to resemble the sketches of Fabi and given to Raghu and it was told that he would not feature in the film's final version. Each scene was first shot with Raghu as a rehearsal for the actors to get the dialogues and movements right. A camcorder attached to the camera was used as a monitor to hold positions and acting. After this, the scenes were shot again leaving spaces to be filled in later with the animated figures. With the physical shoot of the film done, it was time to get started on post-production. 
animation and films until that point was restricted to making titles or for those rare advertisements even songs that featured similar techniques was far too basic for the ambitious effects of OFAB Shrikutan with two versions of his film went to Bombay to meet his animators they met Ram Mohan widely regarded as the father of Indian animation and explained his plight he blasted us during the meeting remember Shrikutan he asked us how we dared to even attempt such a film without an animator during pre-production what was worse is that the crew didn't even storyboard the film not knowing the future of the film ram mohan gave them drawings for the cartoon characters along with a template of expressions for each situation the drawings were there we also had a fully shot film but how do we put those images into the film a roadblock had been hit people considered the film impossible to make they were being advised to drop the production someone gave us a contact of a hong kong based company that could help us with our situation we started exchanging mail and i started feeling positive but that's until they gave us a quote they asked us for rupees 500 per frame and we needed them to make 64000 frames for us shrikutan had given up by then he was going to become the director who squandered an entire film's budget on the side simon taragan and his associates tried their own methods to come up with a solution the system then for animation was to use a rotoscopy machine which would help artists trace over a motion picture footage frame by frame we even managed to find one machine in bombay she could an ads but they said they could only lend it to us for just 2 hours and with just one machine it would have taken us 2 decades to complete the film it was a period of the bombay riots and a phase of great confusion I remember praying to God hoping for one of those bombs to kill me Shri Kutan says but there was hope again Roy Taragan Simon's brother mooted the idea of building makeshift rotoscopes a basic click three camera was bought and a halogen light was fixed on to it each film from Ofabi's reels was then clicked onto the click three camera for the image to get magnified making the tracing simpler it worked and 50 more click three cameras were ordered Around 50 artists too were hired full time to sketch the cartoon characters from morning to night these artists would sketch and color these cartoon characters into cell sheets this process alone went on for more than a year these sheets had to be then sent through a process of composting for the images to register in another reel in all we had close to full four reels of the different stages of the same film with the first reels being with dummy actors reels with spaces left to animate the third semi saturated negative and finally the negative with the developed animation on it with over 2 lakh feet of film this makes ofabi the longest malayalam film even though its running time is under 2 hours shri kutan says i still remember seeing the trial reel of both the live action and animation coming together it was such a relief it's like i could breathe again After a year and a half of sleepless nights the film was finally completed at around 1.5 crores the budget was massive even for a film with a superstar completing the film itself was considered a miracle a lot of effort was then put into advertise the film Simon Taragan even chose to distribute the film himself and there was a lot of hype around its release the film released in August of 1919 and it bombed despite all the effort the audience just didn't seem interested in the film I was heartbroken she couldn't say. Of course I knew that the film wasn't perfect but we didn't foresee this kind of a reception. What was worse was the reaction from the people around him. It's not just the audience. Sometimes I feel if someone had just encouraged me to move on my life would have been very different today. It may have been my fault but everyone deserted me she couldn't say. Which is why he's so irked by the film's second coming. He says he gets a message on Facebook every other day with a millennial explaining how important Ofabi was to them. In fact, even the sci-fi film he's working on right now is a result of this resurgent love for Ofabi. I am known everywhere now as the director of Ofabi, but I wish some of the appreciation had come earlier. My father passed away many years ago. It was his dream to see me become a big director. <laughs>